first article of the Creed of Ecclesia Gnostica Catholica. I believe in one secret and ineffable Lord, and in one star in the company of stars, of whose fire we are created, and to which we shall return, and in one Father of life, mystery of mystery, in his name chaos, the sole vice-regent of the sun upon the earth, and in one air, the nourisher of all that breathes. And now I'd like to share with you some thoughts about the creed of our Gnostic Catholic Church. The creed is something we have in common, something we say together whenever we enter upon the miracle of the Mass. We all share the same words so that we affirm ourselves to be bound by the same oaths and filled with the same aspirations. We all share the same words, but not the same thoughts. Because these words concern mysteries. They hold within them a set of indicible arcana, secrets that cannot be revealed, only approached in the innermost sanctuary of your own heart and conscience, the sacred solitude in which you commune with the presence of that which you know to be most high, which if any man behold, he shall surely die. And we put the words of these mysteries after the clause, I believe, which is not to assert some pallid faith, not merely to believe that you know, but to know that you believe, to understand the creative authority of your own mind, consciously and unconsciously forming the realities of your thought. The words of the creed are a mystery of mystery, and my words here are not a revelation of that mystery. They are only embroidery on the veil. I cannot open the veil for you, but we can look at it together. For you to grasp the mystery, you must pass within for yourself. You must take the step and make the sign and know your own knowing as you say, I believe in one secret and ineffable Lord. That Lord is ineffable, so I'm not going to F him for you. But there is a Lord who is a secret center, who is a winged secret flame, and a secret serpent coiled about to spring. The worshiper of Herupakrat, who is the god of silence and secrecy, worships this ineffable Lord. But the worship is unclear, for the Lord is the secret center of the very worshiper who believes in one star in the company of stars. The stars of the company of heaven, revealed in the vision of infinite space and the infinite stars thereof. This heavenly host, this starry vault, bends in ecstasy to kiss the secret ardors of the ineffable Lord. And there, above the altar, rests the sacred book that places the company of stars in the omnipresent body of Nuit, and places the ineffable Hadith in the heart of every man. But we do not speak their names in our creed, as our prophet has written. There are to be no regular temples of Nuit and Hadit, for they are incommensurables and absolutes. Which is to say, ours is not a special ritual unto Nuit. All rituals are unto Nuit, who is everything known. Hadit is not especially in our worship. Every worshiper is Hadit, who is the one thing that knows. As long as you live, as long as you are an individual, you cannot possess heaven. You cannot lack a point of view. The prophet continues, Our religion, therefore, for the people, is the cult of the sun. 
that one star of whose fire we are created and to which we shall return, the force and fire of Ra Horkuit, the one speaker of the sacred book who demands worship. Now, let us run back in time before the writing of the sacred book, 120 years before the initiation of the prophet. A college professor in Paris has been reading ancient Latin, the Saturnalia of Macrobius, and he is on fire with an idea. Macrobius explained that the essence of every god is solar, and the essence of every goddess is lunar, for he is ever a sun and she a moon. So, this college professor, whose name is Charles-Francois Dupuis, becomes convinced of the same idea. He writes an essay in which he traces the origins of the zodiac to agricultural astronomy in Egypt 15,000 years ago. Dupuis continues with this idea, and after 17 years of work and worry, he issues a treatise in eight volumes on the origin of all religions. His books inaugurate the modern solar theory of religion. Dupuis argues that solar myth is the basis for the old pagan religions and that priestcraft was invented in Egypt as a means of social control. Dupuis is a rationalist who sees modern religion as imposture and bigotry. It is even worse than ancient paganism since its original meanings have been lost. Dupuis writes of Jesus Christ, The people make him both God and man, the philosophers of today merely a man. We will make him neither a God, much less a man, for the Son is as far from the human as it is from the divine nature. For Dupuis, Jesus is the Son. The Twelve Apostles are the Zodiac. The first major champion of the solar theory in the English language was Sir William Drummond, whose book Oedipus Judaicus explains many enigmatic passages from the Hebrew scriptures as astronomical allegories. Dupuis and Drummond were deists, opposed to the churches of their day. Their theories of solar origins were intended to deflate official cults, to show religion to be only a degradation of science. But we can still wonder why Dupuis claims that nature is truth, but thinks that the sun is far from the divine nature. Doesn't our natural world depend on the sun? Indeed, if the gods are all shown to be the sun, doesn't it make sense to honor the sun as a god, to revere the creative and destructive power at the heart of the great system in which we live and move and have our being, and to look to that Lord, visible and sensible, for the perpetual radiance that sustains and encourages us from day to day and from year to year, to make that heart of the sky a model for our own hearts, that we may illuminate and energize those who are in our own orbits. I know I believe in that.